my friend. Hey, 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 hey. No, the math in you. Great to have you aboard here. Oh, look at our feature animal of the, uh, of the week. Yes, it uh, looks like an albino. Oh, an albino stingray. He is bad. Look at that. Of course. We have a math video to attend to, so let's get down to business here. We have a learning target, and that learning target says that we're going to be multiplying a decimal fraction by single digit whole numbers related to a written method through application of the area model and place value understanding and explain the reasoning used. Woo! Wooey! Okay, I know you're thinking, Mr. War, that is just over the top. Well, you know what? It is. But you know what? There's a lot more words there making it seem more confusing. Once we get to the end of this video, I think you're going to feel a little bit more confident. So let's see what we have here. We have some language frames to deal with here. Uh, language frames are great in math. It helps us verbalize our thinking, our mathematical reasoning. Here it says, it says, I use blank to help me solve because when we start using these kinds of language frames, it helps us. And it probably keeps us away from going like, 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 you know, like I was there, but like I wasn't really there. And, you know, it makes it kind of, makes it difficult, right? Anyways, my model shows my thinking because I chose to use blank as my tool to solve because. And after a while, you won't need to use frames anymore. Where it looks like we're also going to be focusing on a mathematical practice. It says use appropriate tools strategically. We'll be doing that. We're going to be using a place value chart and, of course, an area model. And these are great for making sure that it deepens our math understanding. Okay, and that's the purpose why we have that. All right. Let's move on. What's keeping us? All right. Whoa, boy, he just got big on me. He scared me there for a second. He's kind of cool. He's like part of the video. Yeah. Okay, well, let's look at this very first one here. I probably could go ahead and start to model that in my place value chart. Let me go ahead and, and make that a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and take our two tenths and show that on our chart. So I'm going to draw two of those. And now um, we're going to make three copies of those two tenths. All right. Okay, complete. There we go. Oh, look what we just did. We made three copies of two tenths. And now let's go ahead and do the algorithm. So for algorithm, we want to go ahead and put our two tenths times three copies of that two tenths. We have six and we have a decimal place here, but I'm going to do zero times three, which is zero. And if you notice, we have that decimal place so that we need to pull out out of the factor here of 0.2. And when we pull that out and we're actually multiplying by 10, my way I'm going to teach this here, then we're going to put it back in right here because we need to divide by 10. And by doing that, we don't change the value. If you took any number and you multiplied it by 10 and then you divide it by 10, it's going to get you right back where you were. So we're not, we're not like breaking any rules, you know. Pretty, pretty simple. Cool. Let's move on to the next one. So again, I'm going to go ahead and represent three tenths. Now that I've represented three tenths, I can go ahead and I need to make three copies of that. Cool. Now I have my three copies. Three copies of three tenths then, again, is zero over here in the ones place. Here's my decimal place. I usually put that in there right away but to separate. And then I have nine, 0 0.9. Well, let's go ahead and do the algorithm again. 0 0.3 times three. We have nine and here we have zero. I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 10 to get that decimal out. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to divide by 10. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Put that decimal place right back in. So you can see we have a matchup. Great. Okay, very interesting. We have a pattern here. We did, we did three copies of 0.2. We did three copies of 0.3. Let's go ahead and represent this one as well. So there I have my three tenths. I'm going to make four copies. Now we have our four copies of three tenths. But now we have 3, 6, 9, 12. So we actually have 12 tenths here. Well, we can't have a double digit, right, in one place value column. Here's my decimal. So that means we need to rename. And you may recall that we did this with adding and subtracting. So let's go ahead and rename this. I have 3, 6, 9. Here's 10. 10 tenths I know makes one hole. So I can come over here and now put one hole over here. I'm going to put that one right down here. Now, how many do I have left over? I have two left over. Let's go ahead and do the algorithm. Here we have our 0 0.3 times 4, lining up my digits, not my decimal places. Here I have 12, carry the 1. 4 times 0, 0 plus 1 is 12. Now, our answer is not 12, it's 1.2. Uh, that's right, we need to multiply that 1 power of 10 out of that decimal place because we have 1 power of 10. So if we do that, 
we need we need to make sure that we divide it by 10 again to get that decimal place back and then we have a nice match Woohoo! this is just so easy well let's do what we have been doing the only difference this one it's a little bit more challenging we have tenths and we do have hundreds when it comes to making copies why don't we say since the distributive property allows us to say well let's make two copies of the four tenths that's this one right here and then let's make two copies of the three hundredths let's go ahead and do that so I have three hundredths and now I know I need to make two copies of that awesome now I'm gonna make two copies of my four tenths oh this is just so easy okay get my decimal place in there all right all right all right now I can go ahead and I have my two copies of ten so that's eight here I have my two copies of three hundredths which is six so my answer is 8600s. Oh my goodness. This is so easy. Thought it was going to get harder, Mr. Ward, but it's not. Now let's go ahead and do our algorithm. We have 4300s times 2. We line up our digits, not the decimal point. So we have 6, then we have 8, and then that is 0. We have two decimal places. We're actually going to have to multiply by 100 to move that decimal place out. Ooh, that means we need to divide by 100. So we're going to divide by 100 and put that decimal place in. And as you can see, voila, and there were no ones. So there's a zero there. Yeah. However, let's go ahead and show this problem in another way. Let's use the area model. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just move some stuff around here. Okay, so here I have my area model. What would this look like if we use an area model next to this uh place value chart. Well, first things first, we know that when we do an area model, it's uh, a way of using the distributive property. What we're doing is we're taking two, all right, we'll put that two right here, and we're going to be multiplying that two with the four tenths. So we could probably put the four tenths right up here, but we're going to also add because the distributive property says then we have to also take the two and multiply it by the three, the three hundredths. So we'll put the three hundredths over here. Now we have two times four tenths, which is eight tenths. We also have three hundreds times two, which is going to be six hundreds. So now I can go and show the decimal down here. So this is going to be really 0 0.8 plus 0 0.06, because remember that's six hundreds. So what are some of the similarities and differences between these two models? Well, we look here, we definitely here, you can see that we're getting like partial products. That's something that we're doing here. By taking the four times the two, we're getting the eight tenths. Here it was all in one particular, place value column here under the tenths. We made two copies of it. Some similarities there. Uh, in the end, we added these two together. This one here, there wasn't so much adding. It kind of gave it to us all together. We were, once we wrote down how many tenths and hundreds we had, we had the same answer. All right, let's go to the next problem. Is this going to get any harder, Mr. Wara? I hope so. Looks like we've got a longer decimal here. So we're going to go ahead and do the same. Let's use a place value chart, and then we're going to match it up with a area model. Okay, so let's go ahead and do what we've been doing. We have four tenths over here, so let's represent the four tenths. We need to make two copies. Awesome, there's our two copies. Now we need two hundreds. And finally, we have three thousandths. And we need to make two copies. Now, we don't have any ones. Here's my decimal point. Always right between the ones and the tenths place. Uh, looks like we have eight here. We have four here, and we have six. We, in essence, did the place value model where we've made double copies of each let's go ahead and represent that on an area model again we have two so like we did before we're going to go ahead and multiply that two with the tenths column which is four and we have four tenths there okay now we also we have two hundreds here you can see that up there and then finally we have the three thousands now you can see we're just multiplying we have eight tenths here we have four hundreds and finally the six thousands now we can show it in like our equation where we're adding all these partial products. So we have 8 tenths plus 4 hundredths plus 6 thousandths. And when we add all those together, we end up with our 846 thousandths, just like we did with the place value method here. Cool. All right. Isn't this fun? I just think this is so much fun. Okay, Mr. Wara. All right, what do we have here? We have another place value chart. So again, showing model. Let's just get down to it. Let's just fly through this problem here. We need to make four copies. And we have four tenths. Let me show that. We have two hundreds. Now I'm going to come back and make my double, or my four copies of that. And I have three thousandths. Now let me go ahead and make four copies of each. You can see the problem that we're going to run into here. We have a lot of tenths here, more than we're allowed to have, right, in each place value column. 
We had four, so we have four, eight, 12, 16, right? Here, we're okay, we have eight. Then look over here, we have three, six, nine, 12. So the best way to start renaming these is to work from our thousands, right? And move on over. Because we don't know, as we keep regrouping, we may end up with more than we can have in the hundreds, for example, and then we'll need to kind of rename again. So that's the best way to do this. So let's go ahead and do that. We have three, six, nine, 12. So we can take 10 thousandths then and rename that as one more hundredth. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so you see I have three, six, nine, plus one more is 10. So I named 10 thousandths as one more 100. I put him in red so he'd be easy to see. And now I have four, eight, nine hundredths, which is okay. Nine, we're good. But when we come over to tenths here, that's a problem. Four, eight, 12, 16, yeah, that's a problem. So let's rename 10 of those. Okay, see I have four, eight, nine, 10. So I've taken 10 tenths, which I know is equal to one whole. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that and make one disc over here into the ones place. Now it looks like that I'm okay. So here I have, I have one whole. Remember, this is where my decimal point is. Over here I have four, it looks like six tenths. I have had eight, but plus that one now there, now I have nine, and then I have two thousandths. So I end up with one and six hundred ninety-two thousandths. That's using the place value chart. Okay, so I'm gonna put my four, that single digit whole number that we was in our learning target, and I'm gonna be multiplying that with each one of those place value digits. I have four tenths, so I'm gonna write that up there. I'm adding that. This is the way we use the distributive property, plus two hundreds. And finally, I'm going to add my three thousandths. Okay, and now I have my four tenths, two hundreds, and three thousandths. When I start multiplying, whoop, I almost put eight. <laughs> Sixteen. You can see why we always want to check our work at the end, right? And make sure that we're on track. Very easy to make simple little mistakes like that. Adding and multiplying especially. And now we have four times three, which is twelve thousandths. We are multiplying. Now we can go ahead and show that as our decimal. So if 16 tenths, well, 16 tenths really is, yeah, one whole with six tenths plus eight hundredths, which is, and then our eight hundredths, which is written 0 0.08. And finally, we have 12 thousandths. Now, what's important is sometimes people get confused, but with 12 thousandths, remember, it's always got to go uh, to that thousands place if we're going to call it thousands so there has to be three decimal places here and we only have two digits so I need to put a zero there then I put my 12 now I have 12 thousands and of course if we put that all together we're going to end up with 1.6 you can see right here oh that's going to be eight hundreds and that 100 that's going to be nine I'll go ahead and Let's do, so you can see the algorithm. And when you add them, you can see what's gonna happen here. We're gonna end up with a number over here. Woohoo! yeah, yes, I love it. Okay, another problem. Yes, the finale. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the area model then and show this. Remember, we have our six, which is our single digit whole number that we're gonna be multiplying. Here, in this case, we actually have whole number part, which are the ones. So that's just gonna be, be multiplied by one, one. We're going to add that to 6 multiplied by the 2, the 2 tenths that's located there. And finally, 6 is going to multiply the 1. But it's just going to be 1 hundredth because that's what's, that's the place value of the 1. Well, it's actually singular. It's just 1 hundredth. But all right, the S got on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply. Well, here this is 6. And then here we have 12 tenths. And finally, we have 6 times 1, which is going to be 6 hundredths. Now we can show the numeric form of this, 6 ones simply six. Here we have 12 tenths, so that's going to be 1.2 because 10 tenths in one hole, that makes that 1.2. And finally with six hundredths, which is 0 0.06. So let's show the vertical uh, adding of this, the vertical form, I guess you say, put it vertically. I'm going to put on a couple of decimal places here just to help me make sure that my decimals are lined up properly. Here I have 1.2. Remember, by adding a zero on here, it doesn't change anything, all right? And then I have 0 0.06. And with my decimals, remember, bring it on down. That's right. Not only do you need to bring that down, but you need to make sure they're in a the line just like that. Now we have six, we have two, we have seven. So seven and 26 hundredths. Well, you know, let's go ahead and multiply this. I don't think we've actually done this yet, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to take my one and 21 hundredths. I'm going to multiply it by six. Now, when I multiply, I don't line up the decimals. I actually line up my digits. Whereas 
when we add or subtract numbers, we always line up the decimal. Here with multiplication, we do not. We line up digits, not decimals. Now we have 12, carry the 1, we're adding that. 6 times 1, 6 plus 1 is 7. Now we need to multiply by 100 to get that decimal out, okay? So we need to divide by 100 to bring it back in, and that's what we're doing. So we end up with 7 and 26 hundreds, which is correct. I believe that's what we got here. Yes, it matched up. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Bring it on, yeah. Okay, you guys, you know, you know I just love math. I just can't stress enough. I hope that you found this video as is entertaining and beneficial in your learning. And now, live long and prosper.